Today we're going to start graphing linear equations. There are two different formats that I want you to look at because we'll be graphing in both of those. The first form is called standard form. That's when you have an x plus or minus a y equal and a number. And we'll graph that in a little bit. The other form that we frequently use to graph with is called the slope intercept. It looks like this. This is the formula. y equal mx plus b. Now let me tell you what that means. The m stands for the number attached to the x. That is the slope or the angle of the line that we'll be drawing. The 6 right here stands for the y-intercept. Where am I going to put my first point on the y-line? In addition to that, this slope is made up of a top and a bottom. The top number is called the rise. It goes up for positive, down for negative. The bottom number, the 1, is called the run. It goes positive to the right and negative to the left. So we're going to use this information. I have already prepared some uh, graphing uh, items here that are in slope-intercept form already. So we're just going to practice plotting on the y-intercept and then doing what the slope tells us to do. Okay? All right. On our first one, uh, and also uh, in this module, you do have some graphs that you can print out, empty graphs you can print out to use as we're doing this together. The first one says, y equal 1 third x minus 2. So since the negative 2, the minus 2 is the y-intercept, we're going to go down the y to a negative 2. And from there, it says go up 1 and to the right 3 to get our second point. So I'll go up 1 and to the right 3, 1, 2, 3, to get our second point. From there, we can draw our line. You can draw a nice long line, and that is a graph of y equal 1 third x minus 2. I want you to notice, though I'll give you more detail on this in a little bit, I want you to notice that this line is a positive line or a positive slope because it's going uphill. How do I know if it's going uphill? If you take your paper or a ruler and you start reading from left to right, I come to this point on the line first. And if I'm going to trace the line, I would have to trace upward. So this is an upward slope. It's also an upward slope because both of the numbers uh, in the rise over run, the slope, were positive. So that means it needs to be going uphill. All right, that looks pretty good. Now let's try our next one. Okay, this time we're going to go to zero. A lot of times you won't see in literature, they won't put the zero. So if you don't see that number at the end, it is assumed to be zero. I put it for you since it's our first time. Okay, we're going to go to the y-intercept and we're going to put a point at zero. From there, we're going to do what? We're going to rise one because it's positive. We're going to rise one and we're going to go to the right four. Up one to the right one, two, three, four. And I'm going to take my homemade ruler and I'm going to grab this line. And the reason I put arrows at both ends is that anything on this line, to infinity both ways, anything on this line is going to be an answer for this equation. So there's y equal one fourth x plus zero. All right. Let's try our next one. This one says y equal 3x plus 4. But it looks like we're missing something. Notice that the other two have a uh, slope with a top and a bottom. And we do need the top and the bottom. I want you to remember in fractions that when we write numbers in fraction form, every whole number has what underneath it? A positive 1. So if you don't see a number on the bottom, we will assume that it's a positive 1. So I'm going to go ahead and write right now a 1 underneath there so we can have our rise over a run. All right, on this one, let's go up the y to a positive 4. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4 and make my point. And then from there, it says go up 3 and to the right 1. 
So I'll now go from this point up three, one, two, three, and to the right, one. And now that I have my two points, I can draw a nice line. And <clears throat> that is the graph of y equals 3x plus 4. Okay, let's try this next one. y equal a negative x minus 6. Now, there's two things that we need to remember on this one. First of all, if you don't see the number in front of the x, remember the coefficient is going to be 1. So I'm going to go ahead and put a 1 right here for you. That's a negative 1x. And we need a bottom to that slope. So what should we do? That's right, we're going to put a 1 underneath there so we can have a top and a bottom. So this one tells us to go to a negative 6 on the y, which we'll do. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Put our dot. And then what does it say to do? The top number this time is negative. So it needs to go down 1 and to the right 1. So we'll go down 1 and to the right 1. And I'll draw the line. Now let's look at this one a minute. All of our other three were positive slopes. They were going uphill. Because I have one negative in the slope, this line is going downhill. How do I know? Because when I take my paper and I travel across the page from left to right like we read, I hit the top of the line first. And in order to trace the line, I must trace downward. So this is a downward slope, and it, it shows that because when we write it in slope intercept, it shows that we have one negative in the slope, and one negative will make a downward slope. All right? So that was graphing slope intercept. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's graph some, or let's set some up in standard form. Okay, the first one I want to do in standard form is I'm going to write x plus y equal a negative 3. Now, what I want to do is, now that you know how to graph and slope intercept, I want to change this standard form linear equation into slope intercept. And there's a very easy way to do it. If we want to stay with the formula, y equal mx plus b, there's really only one move that I have to make on this equation. And that is going to be, <clears throat> I'm going to move the x to the other side. So let me show you how this works. I'm going to begin with y, because that's what they want. And I have a positive 1y. So I'll write y. They'd like the equal next due to the, what the formula says. I'll put my equal. Now, they want this x right now, because this is the slope. And that's a 1x, you know. Now, I've got to move that 1x across the equal sign to the other side. And when you move a variable from one side to another, it changes its sign. So it's a negative x now, but as it moves across, it will become a positive 1x. And the negative 3 is just waiting there. He didn't move. He didn't go anywhere. So we'll just keep him a negative 3. Now, it looks to me like we're in slope-intercept. Only thing we need to do is we need a bottom to that slope. So <clears throat> bottom to the slope is going to be, you know, positive 1. So we now took an equation in standard form. We only moved one thing across the equal sign. And we have it set up in slope-intercept ready to graph. So let's graph this one. I'm going to go to a negative 3. <clears throat> on the um, y-axis. So let's go there. Negative 3, 1, 2, 3 on the y-axis. And now it says go up 1 and to the right 1. All right, so I'll go up 1 and to the right 1. I'll now draw my line. And there we have a graphing of this. It is going uphill. Notice that the slope is positive. Both the top and the bottom number are positive. As I go across the page, uh, I see that it's going uphill because I hit the bottom first and I'm traveling upwards. Okay, let's try another one. Okay. 
Okay, let's do um, a negative 2x plus 4y equal 8. Okay, we're going to start with our y. Let me put our slope intercept up here again. Okay, <clears throat> we're going to start with a positive 4y. So here's 4y. I need the equal. So I'll put the equal. The slope is a negative 2x, so I need to move the negative 2 to the other side to become a positive 2x, and the 8 remains an 8, a positive 8. Now, what we didn't have to do in the last equation was we didn't have to worry about y because y was already by itself, because if we're going to graph, we need one single positive y. But you see here we have 4y. So what we're going to have to do is, if we have anything other than a positive y, we're going to have to divide the whole equation by the number of y's that we have. So I'm going to divide everything by 4. 4 into 4 is 1y. 2 over 4 can remain that way if you like, or we can make it 1 half. I'll just leave it 2 over 4. And a 4 into an 8 is a positive 2. All right, now we've got it down to a positive y equal 2 over 4x plus 2. That's in slope-intercept form, so we're ready to graph it. Let's go up the y-intercept to 2, 1, 2. And from there, we want to rise to positive, and we want to go to the right of 4. So we're going to go up 2 and over 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to draw our line. This is going uphill because the slope is positive. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? <clears throat> All right. Let's try another one. Okay, let's do, let's do um, a negative x minus 3y equals 6. Now we're going to start with our, our y, but our y this time is a negative. So I'm going to do a negative 3y equal. I'm going to tell this negative 1x to move to the other side, and it will become a positive 1x. And that 6 is still a positive 6, so I'll just say plus 6. <clears throat> now I'm about ready to graph, but I can't graph yet because I have a negative 3y. I've got to divide by a negative 3. So negative 3 all the way across. Negative into a negative is a positive 1y. There's not a whole lot I can do with this fraction, so I'll just leave it as a negative 1 over 3x. And a negative 3 into 6 is a negative 2. Now, I want to tell you something because you're probably wondering about this anyway. I know the negative was on the bottom here, and I can keep it on the bottom. Matter of fact, if I have just one negative, a lot of times you're going to see it in writing where the author of textbooks will put it right even with the line. That means that one or other, uh, one or the other is going to be negative. A lot of times I'll just put it with the top number, but you can put it with the top or the bottom, or you can put it right smack dab in the middle, but it only means one of them is negative, so choose which one you want to be negative. All right, so on this one, I'm going to go to a negative 2 on the y-intercept. Here's a negative 2. And then it says, according to the way I've written it, that I'm going to go down 1 and to the right 3. So I'll go down 1 and to the right 3, 1, 2, 3. Now, before I draw my line, I want to change something and let you see that it doesn't make any difference what number is negative. This time, I'm going to go from my original dot, I'm going to go up 1, but to the left 3. So I'll go up 1, to the left 1, 2, 3, and I'm now ready to draw my line. Oops, excuse me. 
and there we have it. So I showed you that it doesn't matter if the top or the bottom is negative, as long as you follow the rules to the left, to the right, positive and negative, you'll get the same answer. So this is a picture of y equal negative one third x minus two. Okay, alrighty, <clears throat> let's try one more. Okay, this time I'm going to say negative, well, I think, hold on, I think I'll say 3x minus y equal 9. Okay, now we need to start with the y. Look at the y. The y is negative. You need to make sure to catch that. So I'm going to write a negative y first and then equal. Then I'm going to move the 3x across the equal sign right over there. And he's going to become a what? A negative 3x. That's true. Negative 3x. <clears throat> and the 9's just waiting around. So I'll do a plus 9 on him. Okay, now, it looks like we're ready to graph, doesn't it? But we're not because we have a negative y, negative 1y. You, do you know what I'm going to have to divide by before I can graph this? That's true, negative 1. Okay, so here we go. Negative 1. Negative 1, negative 1. Negative into a negative is positive y. 1 into 3 is 3, and two negatives do make a positive. So I'll go a positive 3x, and a negative 1 into 9 is a negative 9. Well, it looks like I need to put a positive 1 now underneath that 3x, and then I'll be ready to graph. So positive 1 underneath there. Now, I could have kept this as a negative 3, negative 1. Most of the time when I see two negatives for the slope, I'll change it to positive. And if it runs off the board, I can always change them both back to negative. So if they're both negative, you could change them both to positive. If they're both positive and that doesn't work on your graph because you run off the page, then you can change them both to negative. So for now, I think I'll just use my positive. I'm going to go down 9. So let's go down now. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I went down the y to a negative 9, and the slope says go up 3 and to the right 1. So I'll go up 1, 2, 3, and to the right 1. And since I dropped my ruler, I'll just have to draw my own line here. And this line is going uphill. Because two negatives mean it goes up means it goes uphill, or two positive means it's going uphill. As I go across the page, I get I hit the bottom first with my hand or my paper, which says I must trace upward. So this is an upward slope with a positive. Both numbers are positive. Okay. So in this lesson, well, what have we done? We have. We know the difference between standard and slope intercept. We have graphed several already prepared for you in slope intercept. And then we took standard form and changed it into slope intercept and graphed. So I hope you had a good time doing that. And make sure you keep lots of graph paper with you.